very good afternoon and uh, apologies for a slightly late arrival on the Tour de Ski. We're into stage three of seven and the Tour has moved from Oberhof to Lenzerheide in Switzerland and a fantastic sprint course set up. We're uh, through to the first round. In fact, we've only got one more race to go in the first round of the men's sprint event and we've just joined, I think that was Wenzel across first. Andrew Newell of USA getting through safely and Stariga will have to wait to see whether he is one of the fastest losers. Andrew Newell, brilliant qualifying time second fastest three 235 32 and that sort of time pretty much average for the men's round the women's first round has been completed we'll give you the rundown for that the results of that when we come to the women's semi-finals i guess the the first bit of big news as far as we're concerned mike uh, two brits making it through to the top 30 in the men's unfortunately both being raced out of it in heat number two and uh, andrew Musgrave leading into the final bend with 150 metres to go uh, to make it through. Unfortunately, just got the line a little wrong. Posey Musgrave as well, finishing 33rd in the qualifying. So 236.9, and uh, as I say, that is pretty standard. So they'll have to wait a while to see whether that's good enough to go through. Joseph Wenzel of Germany safely through. He used a lot of energy to achieve that. Now, the final heat. Kali Halverson with the black bib, the leader of the sprint in the Tour de Ski at the moment, having won the sprint event in Oberhof. Qualified third fastest today. Very safe racing from him. Bernard Tritcher, who showed us that he's like lightning over the first five, six hundred metres in the prologue. Whether he can go the full distance today, I'm not sure, because it's a long course. Effectively, Mike, two big climbs and then that gradual incline of a finish which is what 150 to 200 meters and that's tough if you've saved nothing you've got no chance it seems that way the, the effort on the first lap so it's two laps of this uh, wonderful setting here and 1500 meters in total Peter Nortuk sixth in the tour standings at the moment finished sixth in the sprint uh, in Oberhof just raced out of the final didn't quite get the tactics right for once, but I don't think uh, the Norwegians had brilliant skis in Oberhof. Certainly the Swedes seem to have mastered it. So here we go. Last of the first round races. Halverson, Tritcher, Nortug of Norway, Harold Verm of Austria, David Hoffer of Italy and Enrico Nietzsche, his teammate, uh, the two least likely to go through, having qualified 23 and 28, but don't read too much into that. So much depends on the tactics employed. I think we've watched, what, seven, eight, nine races already, Mike, and still we're undecided as the best way to race this one. Well, if anyone's got the best race line or the best tactic, of course, is Peter Nortug, and I'm very interested to see him going out front, Patrick. Maybe he's going out front to try and control it, but it's it's too slow. He, he will not hold it uh, at the front at this pace. But uh, I think we'll see Norto coming uh, into form as each day, as each race goes by. Look how much ground he's lost on the corners, and that's one of the features. We've got one, two, three, four, four and a half straights with four corners to be negotiated, and they're sufficiently tight to lose time if you get the line wrong. That's really where Andrew Musgrave lost his chance. He led his heat for 85% for of the race, but just lost ground on the final corner. This one, second time round. You can see how tight that is, and you need to be really sharp on the entry to make sure that you don't get thrown wide wide on the exit. And that's fast going into that left-hander, Patrick. You just pointed out it's about, what, 50 kilometers an hour coming into that bend. Nor Nortuk's got a, such a wonderful turn of pace. He's getting some of that spark back. Yeah, but he's had to go a long, long way round to go from last up into first. You don't get that for nothing. And even if he does get through this round, he will pay a price in the semi-finals. But there's a long way to go. Halverson in the black bib looking very, very composed. And a little trip there, number 18. That's Harold Verm of Austria. Tritcher clean at the moment, who's sitting in the middle of the pack wearing eight and the yellow headband. So Tritcher doing exceptionally well and ahead of Petter Nortug at the moment. But leading the way, Kelly Halverson, who lies second in the tour standings, having won the sprint in Oberhof, and he just opened those long legs, beautiful long glide, and uh, the Swede and the Austrian opening up a gap of, what, some seven, eight metres, but Nortug can close that and more when it comes to the final corner in some 10, 15 seconds. Yes, Here we go. It's almost like you get a, a slingshot out of this bend if you take it right. Nortug knows best. I think he's going to come through, Patrick, the man in red. Yes, he is. 
Again, a good turn of pace from Halverson, but Nortuk being thrown wide, and the next the three or four metres covered. Tritcher suddenly finding himself uh, short of power uh, as Nortuk makes it look very, very easy. The spark is coming back, as you say, Mike, and a good win for Halverson. That was cheeky. <laughs> well, he's just trying to do as little <laughs> as possible to get through to the next round, but I don't think that was the perfect race from Nortuk. He had to sprint on the back straight. He had to put in an almighty effort to get up into contention. He did, but he's got that kind of cocky feeling back again his look over to his left to not intimidate but just to say look uh, or just to conserve his own energy amazing turn of pace this yeah this is the back straight first time round he's def oh, definitely oh. getting his feeling back well I guess we could call this the home straight because the finish uh, you can see drifts right over to the right hand side Nautic just keeping an eye on things it, okay, it may look cocky, Mike, but it's the right thing to do. Why why use uh, e an extra ounce of energy when you don't have to? Yep, and that, that to me does indicate that he's beginning to feel the form that he'd lost so much of coming back. Yeah, cocky would have been to slow down like that, but not to turn around and watch the opposition. <laughs> So there you see 238.75, one of the slowest uh, qualifying heats. So uh, I think Tritcher unlikely to go through. Martin Jonsrud Sunby, who uh, qualified in fifth, has gone through as a lucky loser. And we're just trying to ID the uh, other lucky loser from Russia. Yep, Ilya Shonusov, uh, and that was in heat uh, one. He's heat also one. just made it as a lucky loser. Yeah, and he qualified in tenth faster, so no real surprises there. Welcome back to Lenza Hyde, stage three of the Tour de Ski. Uh, a little bit disappointing that we've not got some of the big names in the women's tour, particularly uh, Justina Kowalczyk of Poland, who's won it for the last three years. Uh, Kikin Randall isn't here, Charlotte Kalla isn't racing, but it still looks as though we're going to have a fantastic tour. I know Bjorgen is ahead, but it's only a margin of 18 seconds after two races, and a lot can change between now and next Sunday. Yes, it can, and, and Bjorgen not in the, the semi-final, which I think, Patrick, is, is a big surprise. She just didn't look sparky, she didn't look in control. Yeah, Bjorgen knocked out of heat number five. Ostberg safely through. She was the fastest qualifier this morning, and she goes in the semi-final. Number seven, that is uh, Astrid Jakobsen of Norway, fourth in the tour standings at the moment. She's had two very solid races, already done better than she did in, Ober in the Oberhof sprint. Heidi Veng, her teammate, alongside her. Those two could work together. And uh, Heidi Veng, an exciting athlete. They reckon she's the, uh, the next big star in the Norwegian team. But that's, uh, that's putting pressure on someone, if uh, any statement is around Je Je and then Hannah Kolb of Germany. Kolb's looking stronger, seems to be enjoying herself nowadays. The German team overall, Patrick, six of them making it into the top 30 today. They're in good form. And 23-year-old from Jervik is Ingvild Osterberg of Norway, the favorite for this semi-final. But alongside her, Lauren van der Graaf of Switzerland has the home support. She comes from Davos, never made a top three. And uh, from my record, she hasn't made, has she made a final recently, Mike? Don't think so. She, last year she did. She's, uh, she, she does come good in the sprinting. So van der Graaf on the near side. That's uh, a reasonable start for her. She's gone with uh, Jakobsen. And for France in the black and yellow suit, that is Jean who uh, certainly has shown a lot of maturity recently. Van der Graaf, no hesitation but to go into the front. The Swiss, I have no doubt the Swiss have been practicing here, Mike, because they're taking the corners better than any other team, and they know exactly where to push it and where to ease up. Well, you know, you're absolutely right, Dave. But most of this snow is machine, man-made snow, a little bit of natural in there, and they laid this track uh, many weeks ago just to get that practice on this over the Christmas break. And, and it has paid off. Tabernino doing well in the men's uh, competition. So Van de Graaf over the rise first. Osterberg, the fastest qualifier, right behind her. Jakobsen working desperately hard to get back in the picture. Now in a long, long downhill stretch like this, Mike, we should see the gaps closing because the slip sh slipstream should come into effect. Just wondering whether some teams have got particularly good skis. It's uh, not as noticeable as it was in Oberhof in those very wet conditions. Love the way all the girls taking the line, the very much the inside line to
get back out on track as quick and as straight as possible. It's a very different strategy in the women's race as well, Patrick. A, a reasonably slower start, and then it picks up here in the second lap. Look how hard Osterberg is having to work to get past Van der Graaff of Switzerland. And uh, that could cost her in the end. Van der Graaff just calmly, sensibly tucks in behind the number one Norwegian and will follow her up this climb. There are two stages to this climb. The long incline and then this steep, steep finish. And it's a double step as they turn to the left again. And another 30, 40 metres of uphill, which is where the pain will be at its greatest. And then they get at least 25, 30 30 seconds of rest on the way down. Good move coming in from seven. That's Jakobsen of Norway, former sprint world champion, showing her class here today. And Van de Graaff pushed down into third. A little bit of a concern amongst the Swiss fans. Heidi Vang, the third Norwegian in this uh, semi, almost out of it. There is possibly a chance of coming back from there, but it's unlikely. Two automatic qualifiers, two lucky losers from the two semi-finals so provided the speed is good we were looking at around 258 for the qualifying uh, or the first round of knockout races this doesn't look to be that much quicker but they haven't been hanging around Jakobsen first to rise, right on her heels is her teammate Osterberg and Van de Graaff hasn't given up on this one yet although she's sent a long way round the outside and will have to fight for position now good gains by Van de Graaff, great technique and she's powering through to the finish Ah, oh, superb finish uh, from Van de Graaff and the local from Davos will get a qualifying play she's through to the last six and Jakobsen is squeezed out having done so much work on the... Uh, on the f the first of the inclines. Uh, it seems that if you burn a lot, if you do a massive pace change like Jakobsen did to get to the front, coming into the final long descent, I thought she was safe at that point, but it seems if you put that massive surge in, there's a little bit of payback in that final 150. Now, 258.91. <laughs> they seem to work. They seem to work a whole lot harder uh, than they did on the first round. This is the first time round the bottom end of the course, because of course uh, Van der Graaff second time round was down in third place, to, but did brilliantly to get past Jakobsen. And fourth place going to Hannah Kolb, who didn't really get a look in. Or Jean of France fought well on the first straight, but lost it early on. And Heidi Veng never really got into the race at all. She finished some two and a half seconds down on the winners. It, it wouldn't surprise me, Patrick, if Jakobsen gets through as the one of the fastest losers, or lucky losers as it's called, because that's a good time. 2.59. And what's the... Uh, what time do you give uh, Jakobsen around? 2.59.4? Yeah, 2.59.3 or 4, yep. Esberg's having a good couple of days. Enjoyed a day off yesterday, although most of them were travelling yesterday, so that uh, certainly interrupts the rest that they would have liked to have had as we look at the lineup for the second semi-final. Denise Herman, for me, is the favourite to take this one. She looked so totally in control of her first knockout heat that it's hard to believe anyone's going to beat her. Actually, she employed the same tactics as Van de Graaff, Mike. Get to the front. Ski relax, ski easy. That's what we saw in Oberhof. That's what really is starting to show here. Make that first 90% of the race as efficient and technically perfect as possible. Yeah, saving, you've got to save. And I wonder what uh, what uh, Ericsson will do this time. She put a lot of work at the front uh, in the heat to get through into this stage. And Ericsson, of course, the winner in Oberhof. Here is Denise Herman, strong, tall, good glide on the downhill that was very much in evidence in her first heat next door to her second fastest qualifier somewhat of a surprise Greta Laurent the Italians have come across the border to support her and Sophie Caldwell of USA has uh, done exceptionally well over the last couple of days Mike uh, Keegan Randall might not be here it seems Caldwell has stepped up Caldwell has done so well and maybe her Christmas break with family and friends and Ramsar after Asiago last weekend uh, she really has come here with a, a new set of belief I think Herman being squeezed out at the start for the first time uh, in recent weeks but she looks quite happy to sit at the back she'll have decided where she's going to make the move lots of climbing to do this uh, 
opportunities might to overtake it's a nice wide course compared to overhoff there's there's a lot more snow here they've had colder conditions and everything they've made has stayed whereas in overhoff uh, it was a bit like digging a hole while someone else was throwing muck back into it. It was horrible, and you couldn't do what Ericsson's doing now. You couldn't go wide in Overhoff because the race line was was so much faster than the wider line, which hadn't been skied on because of the horrible wet conditions. Surprise, Kilon, and she was a lucky loser to come through to this. And surprise, she's leading it. Watch Herman on the near side. She's gone from sixth to fifth already. Will she be able to pick up speed? Wants a little bit of help from the uh, wind resistance. Ericsson. Just putting the brakes on. Ericsson uh, coming wide. Now she has to put the brakes on. I thought her ski glide was excellent there. She needs a tighter inside line, maybe. Hannah Ericsson down in fourth place. Denise Herman down in fifth place at the moment. The two favourites. And that's given an opportunity for Anne Kiloinen of Finland. Kiloinen who raced in... Uh, well, she came through as the lucky loser. She was in heat number one. So Kiloinen actually has had a lot more rest than anyone else in this heat. And that is significant. It really is. Even though you can have your some, some jogging on the bike machines which they have to help get rid of lactic acid, Recovery is vital. So Kloinen in the blue and white of the Finnish team, who lies in fifth place in the Tour de Ski standings at the moment. Both top ten results. She's consistent, and that's what you need in this sort of a game. Only 29 seconds, the deficit between herself and Marit Bjurgen. Dropping off the pace already is Greta Laurent. I don't think we're massively surprised to see that, Mike. All her effort going into the qualifying run. And I think when you put it, well, she might come back, but I doubt it. De Herman going very wide on the, on the right, but I think she's Herman not knows what she's doing here. She's got a lovely tactical head on her. And I think Laurent is out of it. Uh, maybe a surprise to come through with the second fastest in qualifying. Well, Ericsson could be in a spot of bother here as they go down the hill. Caldwell and Kalainen of uh, USA and Finland, one and two at the moment. We've got Denise Herman in third position. And Hannah Ericsson of Sweden, the winner in Oberhof, down in fourth. She's got a good line into the final turn, though. That will help Ericsson as she comes out in third. And America leading now with Coldwell, who's had a sensational week of skiing so far on the Tour de Ski. USA leading. Finland in second with Kalainen. 120 metres to go. Denise Herman on the far side, starting to make her move. And Hannah Ericsson digging, digging, digging. But nothing is coming out. And it's going to be. USA with Coldwell who take the win Herman goes through automatically Kiloinen is, could be qualified, 301. it's slower than the first heat so Kiloinen's in danger of going out and there is absolutely no doubt that Hannah Eriksson of Sweden is not going to win this one, she's not even going to make the last six. Surprise she came through on the, on the descent with a lot of momentum but she just didn't have the pace at the end and what a race that was, tactically brilliant from Sophie Caldwell wasn't really in it to begin with, but saved it for when it mattered. I'm just wondering whether the others saw her as a threat, Mike, and uh, everyone else was fairly relaxed about her presence up in the top four, but then suddenly, round that final corner, it was Caldwell who'd saved the best and had the best line and uh, the best entry into the finish straight, essentially. There she is, taking the win. Denise Herman still pretty relaxed, although she did have to work on a couple of occasions, and I, uh, I wouldn't mind betting there was an element of doubt in there as she went round the final corner so there's the final Jakobsen and Kolb the two lucky losers for Norway and Germany welcome back to Lenza High just in time to see the lineup for the first of the men's semi-finals and so 12 men left in this sprint event stage three of the Tour de Ski for this year seven stages in all because uh, we have a major championships this year so the Tour de Ski just cut down a little Frederica Pellegrino he was second in this equivalent race last year which was held in Valmastair the home of course of Dario Colonia what an event that was Mike it was a fantastic occasion I hear just on Colonia, I hear that he is getting back into training as a false start happens and he's hoping to do the World Cup in Poland just before the Olympics, so that'll be his first uh, trial out for Dario Colonia. 21 is Tim Schonke of Germany. Simeon Hamilton, really the man to watch, who's wearing bib number one on the... or second from the near side. Number seven, Pellegrino. Those too easy to confuse, but just have a look at the left leg of Pellegrino. Pick out the ITA as he works his way around the course. Shanka, and then for Canada, 
we have Alex Harvey, who is the leader of the Tour de Ski. What a surprise. He was he was delighted to be there, Mike. He, uh, he was just saying it, it's fantastic how his form has changed over the, the sort of Christmas period. And he just feels he feels strong. He feels energized. And uh, he hasn't really put a foot wrong so far on the Tour. He's done, and I think the previous, the quarterfinals, I love the way he ran it. He stayed in fourth, fifth and sixth position on the first lap and then he began to make his moves on the second lap looks like he's adopting the same strategy this time i think that's sensible you're saving only two seconds but the energy output of that first climb matters next time round couldn't agree more simeon hamilton is the man who's pushing the pace again fastest in qualifying he's pulled a few surprises already he's a he's a product of the stratton mountain uh, school mike which uh, i think in in the old days was set up just for alpine skiers but now it takes snowboarders freestylers and of course the cross country and biathlon guys are in there as well and there is absolutely no doubt that that's played a large part in the improvement of the usa athletes over the last four or five years yeah sharing knowledge sharing the same training location sophie Caldwell part of that group as well and it really does matter to be in that group doesn't he look relaxed at yeah. the front yeah the person at front can always ski relax he's skiing in his own tempo he's got his own space and Hamilton is just pulling away slowly slowly from the rest of the field Pellegrino in second place at the moment nothing wrong with that keep an eye on Alex Harvey in the white suit and the red bib as the tour to ski leader surely he can't afford to go out at this stage Sunby who's a real potential winner of the tour wearing five for Norway got through as a lucky loser so already he's been a little bit fortunate now he's going to pick it up, the man in red coming wide, uh, he's still got a good chance. I think Pellegrino in second place, he'll probably try and take that final left-hand corner. And there on he the is inside. in second place, so tight on the inside. But Hamilton's skis are fantastic, <laughs> and one thing he's good at, one of his best techniques is the free skating. No poles used, he, he stays so low, just like a speed skater, and he's opened up, what, four or five metres. There's no doubt that Hamilton is going to get the choice of line into this final corner. Soon be coming up fast behind him, the Norwegian, then Pellegrino, Harvey down in fourth place, and in danger of not going through to the finals here in Lenza High. Away we go, Hamilton round the final turn, he can see the finish now, this would be a set Sensational day's work for him, but he's being hunted down. Sunby in red. We've got Harvey in white. And on the near side, Pellegrino going fastest of all. It could well be the Italian who goes through. Photo finish without a doubt for the first three. Sunby missing out in terms of automatic qualifying places. What a finish. Ah, that was amazing. I think Alex Harvey got that. Well, didn't he run that well? He was in fourth place off the bend, and he had an amazing energy to the line i think he took that one well i think he certainly threw as a, qu a qualifier it doesn't matter to him where whether he was first or second uh, we just need to pick up on the time mike for that first heat in fact we we won't get confirmation until they've confirmed the result look how far back alex harvey in white fifth position coming around that final turn and you're absolutely right, Mike. Uh, well, he was certainly first equal with Pellegrino. And guess what? Poor old Hamilton, a USA who did all the hard work, could well find himself down in third and out of the competition. Hamilton Sumbi will have to wait and see whether they've done enough. Harvey is safely through. Well, that's what he wanted, says... So Alex Harvey, of course he does. That was uh, the perfect race. So much learned from that race, Mike. You saw how he took it easy on the first climb and in the first round of knockout, everyone was working 100% on that first climb. I think Harvey and, and uh, I guess Pellegrino as well. So you've got to save it for the second round. It seems that way. Harvey, we said maybe a two seconds he'd saved on that first climb, and uh, but his finish was phenomenal. And I'm wondering if, he, if anyone can match him to the line and the final. Finn Horgan Crocker in Norway, who won the equivalent race in Valmester last year, wears six. Number two, Andrew Newell of the United States. Can he do? Can he do better than Simeon Hamilton did in the last semi final? Are we going to see two Americans in the last six? That would be a rare occasion. Joseph Wenzel of Germany. He's looked strong, but uh, maybe just a little bit fortunate in his first round. This man is quick. Callie Halverson. He's tall, he's strong, he's fast on the downhills, and tactically he's done nothing wrong so far. And of course he won in Oberhof, so surely a hot favourite. And then never write off Petter Nortug Jr. 
You just feel, don't you, that he, <laughs> that he is really beginning to believe again in himself and his uh, ability. Well, let's hope we see some fireworks from him today. And uh, Ilya Shurnasov, the Russians have been uh, good at sprinting over the last four years or so. A lot of the top Russians missing, preparing for uh, the games, obviously. Well, a good start from Joseph Fenzel. We saw him doing that in Oberhof. He jumped the gun there. He seems to have got away with it here in Lenzerheide as well. We saw Fenzel, you mentioned Oberhof, going into the final in Oberhof. He ran out of steam. He did so well in the first, the quarterfinal, semi-final, but then ran out of steam in the final. Dictating it, though. Taking it easy. Taking it easy, and everyone else uh, pretty happy to follow. Andrew Newell, it is, on the near side in black. Bib number two just tracking him around the outside. Petter Nortug happy to sit at the back, which means he must be fairly confident about his finishing speed. At this pace, Patrick, as we see the start again, I think so, I think you're right. How he got away with that uh, beats me. That was, uh, in my opinion, another <laughs> chop of the gun. <laughs> uh, look at the time on the first day of the semi-finals. I think we'll get the two lucky losers from that first uh, semi-final. That will be good news for Hamilton and Sunbi. Sunbi has already come through uh, the first round as a lucky loser. Aye, this is so much slower, so they need to pick it up now. Still no work being done by Nautic. Do you think he's just saying, I've done enough work, I don't want a final, uh, because he's interested in the overall tour standings? I, th I think he's just supremely confident that he'll make the front, the top two in this, uh, in this semi-final. He's got a lot of work to do. Still Wenzel on the inside, the German suit looking good, but squeezed out by the second of the Norwegians, Finn Hogan Kroc, who uh, evidently wants to repeat his victory from Valmuster last year, where he looked on very good form. It was actually an interesting lineup. Valmuster uh, saw Kroc take the win, Pellegrino in second, Valias of Canada was in third, and Dario Colonia finishing fourth. Uh, which was uh, bitterly disappointing to the crowd. Kroger, I thought he had a problem with a ski pole there, but he's got it back under control. Now, is Petter Nortug about to make a move? A slight change in the positions. Kroc leading. We've got Halverson of Sweden, the winner from Oberhof in second place and well positioned. Andrew Newell still right up there in third place. And uh, with every opportunity of going through in the top two, Petter Nortug some six or seven metres behind Andrew Newell and under pressure from Schernersoff and, of course, Wenzel of Germany. Now, under the banner, and then they've got 150 metres to go. Still feel that Nortu can come through, but he's running out of space and they've no gaps in front of him. He just needs to get into the top two. Crockett is who leads for Norway. Suddenly ups the pace. Oh, Petter Nortu comes through. He's going out because that race, to me, was so much slower. 2.38 was the time. We're looking for the time. 2.37.94, the winning time from the first heat. And the, uh, the lucky loser, the slowest lucky loser, was only 0.29 of a second outside the winning time. So I'm afraid Petter Nortu tactics have backfired he is going out in the semi-finals he tried he nearly nearly came through just yeah he half nearly... a meter <laughs> Finn Horgan Kroc was uh, just starting to relax but he saw the red bullet coming from over his right shoulder and reacted just quick enough Andrew Newell goes out Joseph Wenzel is out and Schoenes off of Russia who didn't really he wasn't really at the races I think Mike deciding that he'd done enough Legkoff the uh, winner of the Tour de Ski last year didn't even qualify for the top 30 today, so that ruins his chances. Hamilton and Sunbi both go through as the two lucky losers, and they came from that first heat, as we predicted. <laughs> Waiting for the start of the women's final. We're down to six, having started with a whole of the Tour de Ski field this morning. Top 30 going through. Van de Graaff, absolutely delighted. Just like to see it start to calm it down Mike prepare for the final and start to believe that she can do in the final what she did in the semis she, she did nothing wrong in the semis and her pacing her turn of pace I think is a, is a trump card especially on the steep climb the mega tempo well, surely she'll believe that uh, on home snow she can do it one or two big names missing but uh, it is still a very very tight final indeed Hannah Kolb 
of Germany, wearing 10. Next door to her is Jakobsen of Norway. Came through as a lucky loser. She's been a, a little bit fortunate already today. Will she ride her luck in the final? Still my favourite, Denise Herman. Got squeezed out slightly in the start of the semis, but was strong enough to come through. Needs to get to the last straight using minimal energy. And the local, Lorian van der Graaf. What can she do in this last 1,500 metre race? Next door to her, the fastest of the qualifiers and a woman who lies in third place in the Tour de Ski standings at the moment. If she wins, she could go top of the table. Sophie Caldwell, brilliant performances so far from the American. And I think uh, she'll get the support of Andrew Newell and co on the side of the track as this final goes on. OK, Mike, on the first straight, uh, we know it's all about uh, getting your position, but doing it as efficiently as possible. Uh, your, your immediate thoughts, who's, who do you fancy as taking the win? Well, I'm, I'm partly with you and Denise Herman, although her first podium ever was just two weekends ago. She's a little tired at the moment. I'm surprised it's not more tactical. I thought it would be slow up this first climb. In fact, it's slowing down a little now. There we go. Uh, so just fighting for position. I think it has to be Ostberg uh, as favourite. She's just done nothing wrong and she's leading it now. A bit worried she's leading it so early. Yeah, Ostberg wearing one, which tells you she was the fastest qualifier, which tells you that she used more energy to qualify than anyone else. Uh, and, and so seldom does the fastest qualifier come through to win the sprint at the end of the day. That's so true. And is that Herman at the back? If it is... Uh, <laughs> yeah, wise that's, head. My, that's my prediction being blown out the window. I don't, th I don't think oh, you no, can she, afford. I don't think you can afford to be off the back of the slipstream, Mike. You want to be right in there with the group. She does seem to have this wise head in her, Herman. She doesn't. She's not going to be too worried that she, she'll know the race really starts once you've got around this bend. Yeah, it's a tight corner into the climb for the second time and suddenly taking the lead is Jakobsen who was the world champion back in 2007 in Sapporo it seems ages and ages ago she was a very young woman in those days she's matured well she's good at endurance she's still brilliant at the sprint event and at the moment holding pole position ahead of her teammate Ustberg who looks ready to pounce in second place I think you're right I think it's stacked against Jakobsen now having gone so early I know it's not at its maximum pace yet Yet, but she's still going to she's still controlling things at the front van de graaf of switzerland still comfortable in third place but uh, suddenly coming up on the outside is denise herman of germany the tallest figure in this group and if she's got good glide on the skis she could be up in a second place by the time they go around the final corner the crowd switching from the left to the right it's a hundred meter sprint for them it's around 250 meters for the skiers as they go up over the highest point and down the long long descent again sophie caldwell i think fifth position looking tired for me it's just a long way back from that position Osterberg Jakobsen and Herman in the leading three I don't think the others are going to be able to get back into touch Hannah Kolb has lost it I feel Coldwell of USA just lost too much ground and the local Van der Graaf just uh, found wanting in the closing stages but it's been a great day's performance from her so far and it looks as though fourth is going to be the best she can hope for because we just have 150 meters to go Jakobsen leading Osberg her teammate right on her shoulder and Hannah Kolb looking for that ounce of energy that will take her from third into first but she's running out of time run out of snow and it's going to be a Norwegian 1-2 in the women's event and I think we could well find that Usberg goes top of the standing in the Tour de Ski. We'll have to wait for confirmation. She started today 25 seconds behind Marit Bjurgen. She gets 30 seconds bonus for winning today. But don't forget, Bjurgen is going to pick up some bonus points as well because she made it through into the last 30. And, uh, well, Denise Herman, third place. She gets a handful of bonus points. She was only 18 seconds behind Bjurgen at the start of today. Ah, she did fantastically well. Another podium for Herman. I think Jakobsen did brilliantly well there i'm not sure it was the right strategy to lead so long and it played into the hands of usberg who who never looked like she could lose this one well a smile is gone from van de graaf's face but only temporarily she's got to be happy with the way things have gone fourth place just uh, didn't quite have the energy there at the end there uh, for the swiss girl line 23rd in the tour before today 
and uh, that certainly is going to be a big boost. Don't forget, she was uh, she missed out on the semi-finals in Oberhof, so she'll be delighted to have made the top four today, and um, one of her best ever World Cup performances. So far, uh, Lenzer Hyde has been brilliant, and of course, there's the biathlon facility, 30-lane range they've just built here. Well, took three years to build it with the finance coming in slowly, but it's a world-class uh, venue for biathlon now as well. And was that all raised uh, because of the efforts of Benny Vega and the success he's had on the on the World Cup? Yes, absolutely, and uh, it's uh, it's good news for Switzerland and of course the development, the big development into their uh, biathlon team as well as the cross-country team. Well, that was a very tightly fought race. Uh, Mike, do, do you think Herman made made a mistake being a little bit too casual at the start? She looked tired at the start, but she didn't want to get lose that energy that we say is so important to to not throw out in that first lap. She was conserving that as best she could. I, th I think she did leave it a little late to get up into that top three. But she left herself with 30, 40 metres to make up on that the, the second time up the big climb. She did that successfully, but she's she's used her energy at a later stage. It just felt she just needed an extra couple of percent off the, off the start, and it could have been a very very different story for her. As it is, it's Norway one and two. Three thousand Swiss francs for the winner today. Usberg in the middle of the picture, Jakobsen on the left, and Denise Herman back on the podium. What a season! On the World Cup level, you are also the tour leader and the sprint leader. Must feel nice. Oh, that's unbelievable. I've never thought that that can happen ever. So uh, I'm really, really happy and it was an amazing day for me. Very strong on the finish all day today. You had a good feeling? Yeah, I had a good feeling. I had a really good prologue and uh, the rest of the day I, I felt strong. And in the final we had a little fight <laughs> but uh, in the end I was the strongest and it's uh, it's a great feeling well congratulations and enjoy the tour leader bib thanks I will <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sure she will I'm sure she'll enjoy a few celebrations tonight Osberg the winner today her first ever win effectively on the World Cup tour although it doesn't count as a World Cup win because it's just a stage race of the tour to ski but Mike she's top of the tour standings look at that and the margins only nine seconds now separating the top four after three races and Denise Herman must be delighted she's only 2.3 behind One race to go, and it could be every bit as exciting as the women's final. There are some big names in here. There's the tour leadership to be fought over. Alex Harvey is the man who leads at the moment. Kelly Halverson could close the gap significantly because, of course, he won stage two. He could win stage three as well. Certainly, he looks uh, strong. His technique is uh, efficient as Halverson goes around there, and he never really se seems to get stressed about any occasion. Typical Scandinavian, just very calm by nature. Well, some big names in there. The one and two from Val Moster last year, Croc and Pellegrino. They expect to see some uh, fireworks from them. Hamilton and Sumbi have gone through as lucky losers. But if Hamilton just... Well, it's, it's hard to say. If he just conserves his energy, he can do it, Mike, because he had to go all out to try and get into the final. And, and I just feel that maybe after racing so hard in the qualifying, he, he's, he's burned his bolt. But there again, maybe uh, I hope that uh, you know they, they will have analysed that, the coaches, and maybe advised them, OK, this is a final, you've got a chance as a lucky loser, back off a little at the beginning, and you have a real chance to win this at the end. He must still have a, a chance in there. Well, we'll see what sort of tactics they employ. Martin Jonsrud Sundby, and if you want to know how to skate, just watch this man carefully. A brilliant technician, so fluent, very, very elegant, very light on the skis as well. Alex Harvey, taller, stronger. He's powerful, he's powerful, but he's got to get his line right and his position right coming into the final corner if it's going to be a victory for the tour leader. Kali Halverson of Sweden. He went from a long way out in uh, Oberhof, Mike. He went uh, far further out than we were predicting, but he was still strong enough to hold it. We wonder if we see the same again. Federico Pellegrino, I know you think he might do something special in February. 
February? I think, yeah, I think as each sprint race comes along, Pellegrino for me is looking more and more impressive. And Simeon Hamilton, the tash has gone. That's got to be worth at least a second on the way around this course. 1,500 metres the distance here in Lenzerheide. Two laps of 750 metres. Away we go, Pellegrino with that special start of his, and again it proves to be the quickest. Uh, how long? What, two, three weeks before everyone starts adopting that Italian technique? I think so, and Peter Nautic on his best form, we, we have seen a, a version of that split leg start, I think is the best way to get maximum power through the ski poles. Peter Nautic not making it through to the last six, just uh, out skied, he was in the slower of the two semi-finals and hence didn't get a place as a lucky loser. Now, who else came through from the second semi-final, Mike? Because that might give us a clue as to who's used less energy at that stage. Well, it's Hamilton and uh, Sumbi. It was a very fast round. Uh, they came through as lucky losers, but they were in the faster of the two semi-finals. Halverson and Croft came through having raced a little bit slower in the semis. So can we assume that they've used less energy? I think so. And, but also in the, the first of the semi-final heats, you've got a much longer recovery. So uh, I think that's that always, evens out. That, that evens out. Okay, that means we've got no idea who's going to win this one. <laughs> Alex Harvey for me. <laughs> Alex Harvey, who's in the red bib, down in fourth, fifth place at the moment, leading for Norway, Finn hagen Kroc. A chance that the Norwegians could go one and two, just as they did in the women's, but it's going to be a very, very tough job if they're going to achieve that. Pellegrino, who's uh, been happy to put himself in second in the first round, the semi-finals, and in the uh, finals so far, just wants to be tracking the race leader and make sure he's in a good position. Coming up on the outside, Kelly Halverson at the end of the big climb for the second time. Pellegrino using a lot of energy there. His ski pole got trapped under the ski of, I think it was Hamilton, but he's at the front. Big energy to get to the front. Good man. 1.46 on the clock. We're looking for a winning time of just over 2.30. And that was uh, some very nifty skiing from Pellegrino, Mike, showing that he's uh, a pretty dab hand at the Alpine as well. And he keeps skating that little bit longer than the rest of the field. Has he gone too early, Patrick? is a brave man to go so early, but as you say, he's got a, a huge gap at the moment. I think they'll slingshot round this corner to close him down. OK, he worked hard on the last bit of the climb, but uh, at least five metres of that lead was free because he just worked hard at going over the top of the hill. A little stumble from Croc wearing six, and that's allowed number one, Simeon Hamilton of USA, to come through, who looked so devastatingly good in the, in the qualifying rounds earlier on today. Alex Harvey coming up on the outside, but it's still the USA leading by four metres over Canada. Harvey can't make it, and Simeon Hamilton takes his first ever World Cup win, 2.37. 7-0-0. He learned his lessons from the semi-finals and he's come through to deny some of the biggest names in cross-country skiing. So impressed with the American and so impressed that he changed his strategy on that final. He did none of the early work, saved it for that last corner and uh, nobody could match him. What I, a race. I, I thought Alex Harvey was going to come through, but he ran out by about a metre. Yeah, and Pellegrino, who was some 15 yards ahead going into the final corner, he's ended up in fourth place, almost a full second behind Simeon Hamilton, who just pressed the button as he rounded the last corner, and no one could touch him on the home straight. Alex Harvey made a bid for glory, Mike, and th there's no doubt that Harvey remains the tour leader. So uh, a day for the North Americans as far as the men's tour is concerned. They're showing the Europeans how it's done when it comes to the, the strategy, the saving of energy. It's four times out today with the qualifying, quarterfinal, semi, then the final. A lot of energy. So, two podium finishes already for Alex Harvey. He remains the tour leader. His bank balance is getting bigger by the day. Another 3,000 uh, in the bank for Hamilton today with his win. And, of course, that really the last of the genuine sprint. So I'm not sure we're going to see Hamilton uh, taking a top three result again on the tour. But uh, he'll be happy. He would have settled for that if you'd offered it at the beginning of the day. Sumbi generous with his uh, applause and congratulations. Somebody, of course, a big friend of uh, Andrew Musgraves. And uh, Andrew Musgrave uh, and Andrew Young, the two British competitors, they both got through to the last 30, incidentally, but both knocked out in heat two. A little bit unlucky, but again, 
Musgrave needs to watch these races and just learn the tactics that are, that are required. It's a, it's a wise head that you need, I think, for these sprints. You have to conserve some energy. And I think Andrew Young did brilliantly well as uh, also uh, to make it into the top 30. 28th position, that's his best ever. And Posey Musgrave as well, 33rd, just outside the qualifying. 1983, the Americans had a win with Bill Koch, and then it was and way until 2006 when Andrew Newell took the next victory for America in cross-country skiing, and now another victory for America. They're few and far between, and they should be celebrated. That's great news for the North Americans. But, all, you know, time and time again, Mike, we've been saying that the Americans are the best improved team, particularly on the women's tour. Over the last five years, no one has made advances like they have. It's incredible. And I think there's positive uh, belief that they have. And Alex Harvey was saying how positive he feels. He loves this, loves being in Switzerland. And, and I think that's, that's a big part of the Canadians and the Americans' psyche. So have a look at the results. Uh, Sunbi does well, gets himself into third position. He's fifth in, or was fifth in the tour before the start of today, and will no doubt improve his position. But Alex Harvey is still the men's tour de ski leader. Jonsrud <laughs> Sunbi is uh, out for the count well he's got to uh, he's got to raise his game because they are racing again tomorrow the men going over 15 kilometers is it 15 it 15 is. classic style first uh, genuine classic race of the tour and uh, that will certainly suit uh, the classic specialists but right, with only Sydney two Hamilton of the, the seven USA, legs your first classic, stage world cup victory ever uh, very tight to the line. Uh, you knew you had it all the way. Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't uh, think I had it until I was like five feet across the line. Um, so I just focused on skiing through the finish and uh, yeah, just kind of sticking to my guns and and uh, just focusing on on right ahead of me and uh, turned out well. So I'm psyched. You uh, you join your teammate Keegan Randall as the only U.S. skier to ever win a stage World Cup. Uh, nice feeling. <laughs> I'm in I'm in very good company for sure. Keegan uh, is a hero to us um, as uh, as U.S. skiers, and uh, yeah, it's super fun to be up there. Uh, this hasn't really sunk in yet, so I don't really know what to say about it. But um, but it's awesome. This this course, this venue, this town, it's amazing. We uh, we love coming to Switzerland to race, and it seems like it's always sunny and fast skiing and uh, great spectators so we're psyched to be here and uh, I'm really psyched on the day for sure. Well congratulations and enjoy your time on top of the podium today. Thanks Jeff. Well he certainly will. We didn't hear any comments about the weather in Oberhof when we, <laughs> when we left there but uh, what a fantastic race from uh, Hamilton. He'll be absolutely delighted. So tomorrow they race again, as we say, the men going over 15 classic style. That's the traditional style. The women 10 kilometer classic. Will it be a chance for Marek Bjorgen to get back to the top of the Tour de Ski standings? Having been deposed today by her own teammate, Osterberg. Then it's downhill coming up on uh, Friday from uh, Toblach. And of course the Tour de Ski, the long one on Friday which is the 35 kilometer top black race. That's a really tough uh, race and for many years is the decider. Saturday and Sunday's programs up on your screens at the moment. They have uh, the men 10, the women five on Saturday, and then the finale, the Alp Chamis, both men and women racing the same course. It's the race to the top of the hill. And that is one that breaks most hearts. And uh, there are very, very few athletes that can keep going all the way to the top of the climb. And I wonder whether we're gonna see a Norwegian win the tour for the first time ever, or will it be the Swiss, or maybe even the Americans who will come through after what we've seen today great racing from the Norwegians in the women's Mike Osterberg and Jakobsen one and two Osterberg the new leader of the women's tour but only 2.3 seconds separating the top three positions that's just how we like it with four legs to go it's quite amazing and, and of course 10 kilometer classic for the women tomorrow I do wonder how Osterberg's going to cope with that she'll be hoping another victory 
Jakobsen in fourth place round the final corner, and that's where he suddenly turned up the power. Brilliant race from uh, Hamilton. Untouchable in the closing stages. Well, exciting stuff. I think uh, this course has certainly done itself proud. We'll look forward to tomorrow's races once again. The women over 10, the men over 15. We'll see you then. Goodbye for now.